thank you very much for your company and welcome again to your channel Transmission Lines Engineering TV. I gave myself the task of uh, making this video which is fragmented in two parts as, um, as a tribute to those characters who invented the beetle components to develop a new technology. Each of these components have a great story. Would you accompany me? In this video, we will travel back in time to know a little about the history of transmission lines, about its origins, its protagonists, the events that had to happen and the rivalries that were generated to completely revolutionize the world. I can tell you that it is a beautiful story of heroes and rivals, and unfortunately with a sad and unfair end. Thanks to this story, the world is as we know it now. Thanks to this story, humanity has electricity, and thanks to electricity, mankind has developed other technologies that has brought us something so simple that we do every day, such as turning on the lights in our homes, entertainment, manufacturing, employment for millions of people, development of large cities, until the conquest of space. Nothing, absolutely none of this will have been possible without this story that I brought us as a result the development of a technology for the massive generation of power energy, its transportation, transmission lines, and its final distribution to the homes of all of us. To all those heroes, wherever they are, my most sincere gratitude. Our story goes back to the 19th century in two places in the part of the way. On one hand, in New York City, where a small child born in Ohio, who at present will be diagnosed as a child with attention deficit and hyperactivity, and who was expelled from his school because he was a troublemaker, and didn't learn the class like the rest of his classmates. This little one, like many uh, who surely exist today, was named, you already the name, Thomas Alva Edison, better known as the Wizard of Menlo Park. On the other hand, and on the other side of the world, in what was the Austro-Hungarian Empire, now Croatia, another little one who, despite being a brilliant student, was a bird reserved and lonely child, like many children today, but since uh, his childhood, he had images in his mind very similar to the world that we see today, an illuminated world. It is not a coincidence that just at the time he was born by night, a very intense thunder from the sky came down. This child was named, you already know it as well, Nikola Tesla. A man who perhaps never had the diffusion as Edison in the universal history, but is, in my very personal opinion, the creator of the technology that supports the human race as we know it today. Both uh, characters share a common denominator from their early childhood. They were not normal children, but uh, the concept normal I think has a very ambiguous meaning which uh, varies from person to person. Well, um, each character followed their very own road from, uh, from their early childhood until life and history were in charge of uh, bringing them together at the convergence point, the electrification of the world. Nevertheless, each one 
entered through a different gate to the same game and there was where battle began. Edison, on the other hand, had his uh, own research laboratory sponsored by the biggest bank in McNane at that time, John Pierpont J.P. Morgan, today founder of what it is, J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. But prior to Edison's financing, J.P. Morgan ventured into the unknown in an industry that didn't exist yet, even against the will of his father, Junius Spencer Morgan, who was uh, one of the first bankers in the U.S. and who refused to invest in anything representing a risk. After many uh, experiments based on try and error, Edison, as we know, achieved in 1879 the development of the electric bulb and with it electrified the first building which was uh, precisely the house of J.P. Morgan where the first electrical generation station was also installed. This happened in New York, United States and the birth of this new industry will have to compete against kerosene, an industry monopolized by another great character in history, John D. Rockefeller, owner of the then Stanley Oil Company. Kerosene was the fuel that provided lighting and heating during the second half of the 19th century. So uh, the battle that led to the birth of uh, the transmission lines did not start with Tesla, as, uh, as we think, but with Rockefeller, who, uh, upon learning about the new technology, started a campaign to defame the use of electricity by qualifying as deadly. So, uh, despite of this campaign, Edison had a tough battle against Rockefeller and continued to develop the first electric company, Edison Electric and Light Company, which uh, was funded and financed by J.P. Morgan. At the same time, in some regions in Europe, successful uh, experiments were also carried out, but it was in America where this technology was promoted on a large scale to become what we know today as transmission line. Um, curiously, uh, the first commercial transmission line was not overhead but on the ground. Uh, the supply system used by Edison was named direct current or DC, which is not necessary to explain how it works but it is necessary to mention its limitations. DC drives uh, low voltages, which makes it safer for domestic use, but it's short range. That is, the losses through the first transmission lines were high, so it was necessary to, to install several generation stations since uh, a single station cover just um, a small service area and in this way, reduce the losses in the transmission line systems. Uh, they were also very noisy because silencers didn't exist yet. So um, soon, New York was flooded with power stations and the first transmission lines, but uh, because it was a short range system, the, uh, the communities outside New York and beyond were left out of uh, Edison and J.P. Morgan's plans because um, it was not financially profitable to invest in infrastructures in remote areas since uh, most of his habitants were immigrant working class and, and of course will not be able to pay for such a service. Let's remember that at that time there were not uh, contacts no outlets, no sockets, no meters, no manholes, there were no distribution poles, no insulators, no wiring in the house. 
and much less a design theory guideline of these infrastructures. So who will pay for that? The customers? Those uh, potential customers could hardly afford to pay for the kerosene and have some food on their tables. So uh, this technology was not yet um, affordable for the general public, at least until then, because the electric service was, uh, was uh, something that only the wealthy population or, or large industry magnates could pay for until another character came up to a scene and revolutionized not only the way to generate and transmit the electric power, but change the world from its very core. Nikola Tesla. Tesla was uh, a brilliant student of engineering and physics, very reserved, very lonely, creator of a world in his mind where there was only one habitant, himself. Tesla once said, being alone, that is the secret of the invention. Being alone is when ideas are born. Tesla was a man of great dreams, great images. Uh, he saw uh, nature not only as something beautiful of creation, but um, as a great tool to create a new way of life. More than wealth, Tesla sought for the benefit and progress of the human race. From a, from a very young age, he was uh, captivated by the natural phenomenon of electricity, and uh, from his early childhood, he could see the enormous potential of electricity, and it became his greatest ambition to conquer and implement the massive use of this natural phenomenon. Only Tesla, only him, have the wit, courage, and the guts to give life to uh, what didn't exist yet, or I could say it already existed, but he simply learned its language to teach it to all of us. During his student days, electric motors work based on direct current which uh, required the use of uh, what we know now as commutators or collectors, which are elements that have a constant physical contact with the motor windings and use the energy produced. However, this uh, physical contact led to high friction losses, so Tesla imagined a generation system that was free of all mechanical friction and take maximum advantage of the power generated. I believe uh, Tesla nowadays could also be called as a character that does not follow the rules, but um, precisely this ambition to break the rules was what led him to the discovery of the energy system that moves and maintains the modern world, alternate current, or AC. Edison, meanwhile, put into service the first power station in the United States for commercial service in 1882. It was a plant called Per Street, located in the vicinities of uh, today Fulton and Per Streets in New York. The building doesn't exist now, but uh, it can be located with reference to the Cliff Street substation in Manhattan. Uh, Tesla, in order to give life to his project, had to emigrate to the United States and manage to join to Edison's work team. So, once inside the team, uh, he worked on the development of his AC motor but uh, Edison never gave him the opportunity to show his invention, as uh, he said that alternative current was uncontrollable and lethal. And indeed, Edison was completely right in his perception of uh, alternating current, which is based on high voltages, 
capable of killing anybody without necessarily a physical contact but with the simple fact of being close enough what we know today as touch and step potentials so according to the history and my very personal perception Tesla talent was never recognized by Edison until Tesla decided to quit from Edison's lab at that time of course it was not easy to find a job again for someone with the capabilities of Tesla because simply the companies requiring this type of knowledge didn't exist yet. Later Tesla met another character of great stature, George Westinghouse, and between them they will create the Westinghouse Electric Company with which the duo Edison and JP Morgan will have to face what will become the battle for the electrical industry and on the other hand there will be another rival who will take advantage of this circumstance to continue in the lighting market John D. Rockefeller Thank you for watching this first part of this uh, beautiful story I consider it is necessary for all of us as uh, designers or liners to have a, a kind of idea what's behind the switch that we turn on and turn off every single day. So please join me in the next, uh, in the next part of this video. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Transmission Lines Engineering TV training to power the world.